Let's take a look at the starting grid, the final 24 in the A-Main Championship. Kevin Doty, Tracy Hines on that front row. Corey Cruzman, Tony Stewart in row number two. On back through this star stud. There's Danny Lasoski. He's going to line up in row number eight. On down through to Davey Ray and J.J. Yaley back in the final row. Three rookies in this field of 24. Looks like we're getting ready to go racing. And the 16th O'Reilly Chili Bowl Nationals is green. And whoa, contact. And Cruzman goes up over the wheel. And it pushes him way to the outside. The 47 car, and my choice, is going backwards. Yeah, Cruzman got a terrible start. He was way back there. That was Casey Kane that got up in the air in that white car. But Cruzman, by far, the worst start of anybody in those first couple of rows. Oh, oh and a big rollover by the 78. And that is Troy Rutherford, one of our three rookies. Right. They did get in there. And that's Shane Hollingsworth in the yellow number 85. He's also involved. So, uh, not a very good start for the two rookies here early in the event. No, and that is a Fontana-powered car that he's driving, even though it's both owned by Wilkies. They have two different engines in those two cars. And again, the green flag flies, and immediately Hines starts opening up the gap again. Doty in second, Tony Stewart in third, and Greg Lukert in fourth. And you can see right now the racetrack very quick, and it's, the cushion is just barely off of the pole. It's only up about a car width. So these guys running right on the fastest part of the racetrack, but that fastest part right now is almost on the bottom of the racetrack. There's Corey Cruzman, started in 10th on this restart. Remember, he had trouble right at the very beginning of the race when the green flag dropped. We're five laps into this, 45 to go here at Tulsa. Greg Lukert, the 01 car, still running in fourth. And you see a huge traffic jam there in the back of the pack as everybody trying to find a place to get around, whether it be on the bottom or the top. Now, Cruzman has moved back down to the very bottom of the racetrack. That's Dave Darlin in the black number three right in front of him. And Cruzman is starting to work his way back through this field. Meanwhile, there you see the margin of back from first, second, on through third. The best battle up front is right there between Tony Stewart and Greg Lukert. Yes, and here's the battle for fifth and sixth. That's Jeremy Sherman and Critter Malone in that black number seven trying to get around him. Meanwhile, Tracy Hines is uh, attempting to make a shamble to this race. Whoa, a little contact. That is Jerry Coons Jr. Nice save, Jerry. Yes, he got up over a wheel, got down on the inside of the racetrack, but recovered back on the racetrack and hung on. He lost the position or two. Now then, Dave Darlin down on the bottom of the racetrack trying to get around Casey Kane. Casey Kane in that white number 51 car on the outside. He's running the cushion. Dave Darlin running the bottom of the racetrack. And we can tell you, Corey Cruzman has already gotten around both those guys. He is moving up. There's Tracy Hines getting ready to start lapping traffic. Here is the battle for 11th, Chad Farmer, Jerry Coons. That's how far it hurt Jerry when he went up over the berm there. Meanwhile, Tracy Hines getting into lap traffic. That's Davey Ray already that he's coming up on. And you can see that Tracy's running the high side of the racetrack. The groove has moved up quite a bit already because the bottom is getting a black spot. You can see a little black there on the straightaway as well. Number 12, Kevin Doty is second. The 67 of Tony Stewart is in third. And right now, this lap traffic is slowing Tracy Hines up a little. Yeah, he's moved a little bit higher than he really wants to run. Kevin Doty, though, still hanging on to second. Stewart hanging on to third. And meanwhile, Greg Lukert has moved back and lost a couple of spots. And Corey Cruzman was right there in seventh spot. So he's picked up the pace and is closing the gap. And again, Hines unable to get around these slower vehicles. Well, you can see they're running side by side. And as long as they do that, it's going to be very hard for him. And it's going to give the guys behind him a chance to catch up. Well, that was J.J. Yaley that just went a lap down. He's on the bottom of the track trying to get his lap back. In fact, he has momentarily. Yeah, he doesn't give up very easily. He's going to uh, battle back as hard as he can because if there's a yellow, he gets another chance to close in on the field. But if he's a lap down, he has no chance at all. Battle for third. You can see it. Stewart, Malone, and Corey Cruzman. And Cruzman is all over the back bumper of Tony Stewart. They have contact. Well, I think right now, Corey Cruzman's the fastest guy on the racetrack. He moved right down to the bottom, and he has got that left front up on the berm, and he's passed a lot of cars. Critter Malone stays to the outside and still battles with Stewart and gets around him, stays in front of him, I should say. But, but wait a minute. Tony Stewart is the guy that doesn't like the bottom of the racetrack. He's always teasing Lasoski. There he is again, down there. That's right. Oh, look at our leader. Something's wrong with our leader. He's uh, looking down, trying to figure something out. It looks like the car's running intermittently. It takes off, and then it stops, and then it slows down again. Tracy Hines was dominating the first section of this race. Kevin Doty has taken over the race lead. Hines is slow and is in trouble. 
Yeah, you can see him. He held his hand up as if to say, I don't know, guys, something's wrong. Oh, oh and oh. he almost gets slid into. Man, oh, man. Yeah, he's uh, very slow around the top of the racetrack right now. He's afraid to pull down because there's so much traffic out there, he doesn't want to pull down in front of anybody and cause a crash. Well, he's coming to a stop. The yellow is out, you can tell, as the uh, sounds of the engines have uh, decidedly declined. And that guy's a little tussle for themselves. 21 laps complete. We go back to green flag racing, and look at Cruzman going high. Yep, he just goes where they don't, trying to get around him. He's actually been passing most of his cars on the bottom of the racetrack. And look at Critter Malone. He's a guy that likes the top side, but he's not afraid to go to the bottom. And he is really giving a challenge right now to Kevin Doty. And right behind him is Tony Stewart, still running that Danny Lasaski low line. Man, oh man, Critter Malone, a guy who usually likes to run the rim right around the top, doing a heck of a job right around the bottom but so far has not been able to make that pass on Kevin Doty as Doty just holds his own right in that same spot every lap. Whoa, Cruzman came so close to scraping the wall there with a the right rear tire, but he holds on. He's still in fourth. This is the battle for the race lead. Kevin Doty, we are midway this time by. Doty, 25 laps to go to get his first ever Chili Bowl championship. Ritter Malone settles into second place now. And Stewart stays on the bottom. Cruzman, he knows he can't get around him up down to the bottom, so he goes to the top. He still can't get around him. Casey Kane back there as well in the mix in the number 51. And there is also the 29 of Jason Leffler starting to move up. And look at this battle for the race lead. Malone just underneath of Doty, but unable to get by. Malone is a little bit faster up on the cushion, up where it's a little heavy, but when he moves down to that, where that slick spot, that black stuff you see on the racetrack, he can't get enough traction in that black stuff to get around him. Meanwhile, Tony Stewart, he just hangs that left rear. He kind of uses that, that berm in there as kind of a little track. He gets that left front arm and just lets him pull him around the racetrack. Kevin Doty now has opened up a bit of a margin over Critter Malone, about six, seven car lengths. So Doty is starting to become as dominant as uh, Tracy Hines was just a few laps to go. 20 to go here at the Chili Bowl. Critter Malone is now under attack from Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart has never moved off the bottom of the racetrack. And right there, Critter Malone, he moves down into the middle. He was running a little higher up on the cushion, but now then there seems to be a groove right in the middle that he's running and uh, seems to be pretty quick, but Stewart gets around him. Can he hold on to the lead as Tony is, he's going to take some ribbon from this. I mean, he's always riding Lasoski about being a down low and here. <laughs> low here and he slow, is. low and slow. You don't want to run down there. He keeps telling Lasoski. Lasoski's won a lot of races down there. And right now, that's where Tony Stewart really likes it. You can see Corey Cruzman back in fourth behind Malone. There they are. They're, all three of them are running low. And here comes Tony Stewart as the low line is really starting to come around. And he has gained a lot right now. He was a little bit ahead right there of uh, uh, Doty. Doty comes back, though, trying to make that pass. Cruzman, meantime, he pulls up right alongside of Critter Malone. We have got battles going on first and second, third and fourth. And look at Cruzman. He gets way up on that berm. He could have upset that thing, gone out and hit Critter, but he kept it under control. But Doty doesn't move. He stays on the high side, just keeps hanging on. Look at him. He runs down a little bit lower, throws that thing in there. It all boils down to who makes a mistake and who doesn't. So far, neither one of them has made a very big mistake. Swapping the lead just about every other corner, and this time Doty has the margin as he comes around, and there is Tony Stewart still down low. This is very precision racing. You have to hit your mark exactly in order to get a good lap. The slightest error gives that other guy the advantage. Right now, uh, you know, Stewart has gained it back on him just ever so slightly. Man, oh man, these guys are racing hard. And Corey Cruzman has moved into third. They're coming up on Troy Rutherford, lap vehicle. This could make things interesting, but wait a minute. The yellow is out, and that is Jeremy Sherman. Yes, and he was running as high as fifth position, and he's now going to have to go flirt at the back. A tough, tough break for Jeremy Sherman. Twelve laps to go. Here we go. Green flag flies. We're underway, and you're right. There goes Tony right down on the bottom, and right with him is Corey Cruzman shooting to the lead. This time, will it be the 67 of Tony Stewart? He's got it. Yes, he certainly does. Looks like Cruzman now is working on Kevin Doty as he tries to move into second spot. Doty's spot up there on the top of the racetrack seems to be going away just a little bit 
as he's now dropped back into third spot and everybody else has moved down on the bottom of the racetrack. Kevin Doty in his 13th main event final here at the O'Reilly Chili Bowl and he has yet to win and he has seen his chance slip from first to third. Ten laps remaining. And you can see his problem is coming off of the corners. He just doesn't get as good a grip coming off the corners. It looks like it's getting a little bit slick up there. Plus, when everybody runs on the bottom, they throw barbels up in that groove. If you've got nobody running up there with you, then it makes it slicker on the top than it is on the bottom. Not as good a grip. Look at Corey Cruzman. He is climbing the berm, trying to find a way to get underneath Tony Stewart. Yeah, I don't think Tony Stewart, there's nothing lower. And look at this. Well, he's trying to hold off Cruzman. Doty doesn't give up, and he keeps digging away up there, and he goes back into the lead. What well, great action here at Tulsa because the lead has changed hands again. Doty has come back and has retaken the top spot, Corey Cruzman, but gets bumped all the way back to third in this transition. And remember, Cruzman, the only driver in this field that could become a multi-time winner along with Sammy Swindell. He's looking for his second Chili Bowl championship. Kevin Doty says, don't you tell me there's no grip up here on the top. I'm staying up here and I'm finding the boys and I am going back to the front. Tony Stewart, meanwhile, he's just as convinced that the only way to win this race is to stay right on the bottom. See that right rear? It's just in the wet dirt. As long as he keeps that right rear in that wet dirt, he gets good bite off. Down there on the other end, see, it's in the black. He's going through one and two better than he is three and four. And on the other end of the track, though, I think Kevin Doty has the advantage. Less than four laps remaining. Doty on the high side. Tony Stewart down low, three laps, this time by. And this time, Doty's got the lead. And Doty, you can see, Tony Stewart made a little bit of a bobble, and when he did, Doty got the lead. Now then, Tony Stewart has to run that bottom without a mistake, because every time he makes just a little bit of a bobble, man, who won, who won that lap? I don't know. Two laps to go. That's the only thing we can guarantee. And look at Cruzman trying to climb the berm. He gets both wheels up on the inside, trying to get underneath Tony Stewart. I think he's faster than both those guys. Just can't find a way to get around. Oh, Doty gets a little high, gets it wide, and opens the door. White flag is out, and Doty's chances may have just slid up the track in turn four. Well, he went in there awful hard. Tony Stewart, low and slow. And Tony Stewart wins his first ever Chili Bowl championship in his fifth ever final. And look at the celebration. This guy is so excited. He doesn't race for the money. He's the perfect example of somebody who doesn't race for the money. He races for the win, and that's why he is so great. That was Rusty Coons there, Keith Coons, excuse me. He's celebrating. He's won this race as many times as anybody as a car owner. And look at Tony Stewart with the Mopar Power. That's an $11,000 contingency bonus. Thank you very much. But like you said, he doesn't care about the money. Right. This is the Mopar Power car, not the Sesco Mopar. There's two Mopars built by two different guys, both of them up front. But uh, I don't think it was the engine. I think those guys drove the wheels off those cars. You saw Danny Lasoski come by and congratulate Tony as he makes his way back to the pits. We're going to make our way down towards uh, the winner circle as uh, listen to this celebration. You can see Keith Coons extremely happy, along with everybody else involved in this operation. Everybody uh, throwing their arms up. They deserve it. Man, they did a hell of a job. And these fans, I mean, Tony Stewart is the champion of short track racers. He makes no bones about it. He loves this form of racing more than anything else. And he loves these kinds of fans as well. 168 competitors came. Only one goes home a winner. And you're looking at him, Tony Stewart, as he has won his first ever Chili Bowl championship. Amy East is fighting her way through this crowd. And Amy, I think we're going to throw it down to you and let you talk to this year's winner here in Tulsa. Well, how do you describe it? Two words, you guys. Tony Stewart. He likes to come back. He likes to run the midget car races with us. He wanted turkey night two years ago. He got it. He wanted the bowl. You got it. And what a fight. You had the elbows up. Stewart, what are you feeling right now? <laughs> This is awesome. I mean, I like when it wins the cup races, and I hope Joe Gibbs doesn't take his personal, but this, this kicks ass. 
<laughs> that may be the shortest Sitco winner interview we'll ever have from him. Yeah, and he meant every word of that. He loves this kind of race. Keith Coons, Pete Willoughby, that whole crew got to be just as happy as he is right now. As the celebration continues down on track side, let's take a look at the final results. You can see uh, Dana Lasoski came home in seventh. Look at J.J. Yelly fought back all the way to 11th place from the back of the field.